All right, don't worry guys, I've got lots of really cool videos about plants coming out real soon here, but first I've got to take a little bit of time here and help some people that have been coming to my channel and asking some very serious and real questions. This is about the finger injuries. And yes, I said injuries, I'm down to eight fingers. I mean, they're still all there for uh, looks, but uh, that's about it on a couple of them. So it amazes me I posted those videos, started posting them a couple years ago when I had my initial finger injury and didn't know what would come of it, but I just wanted to tell my story as I went through this in case somebody else wanted to see what I went through. And over the last couple of years, I have been inundated with comments about that series of videos. People who say they had the exact same injury. And if you haven't seen what happened, if you're just coming onto the channel, I'll put a link to that first video. I've actually had two finger injuries and I'm gonna update you on this one, but I will put a link to that first video and maybe I'll just try to get links to everything down there um, so you can catch up on what happened. But two years ago, I sliced my pinky finger really badly, cut the tendon, the nerve, all that. I mean, they might as well just cut the pinky off at this point, but a lot of you have come here, found these videos who just sustained the same or similar injuries and you have found a lot of peace in watching them because you can see where things go as it progresses, it's a really traumatizing injury. It's like, it's mentally, it, more than anything, mentally and emotionally devastating because you suddenly can't use your hand and then when it heals, the finger may not work the way it worked for the last 40 years or however old you are. So let's get you guys up to speed. This is a two year update on this finger and then we'll talk about this finger which is like a several three or four month update. This finger here, the pinky, you can see that thing doesn't, I can't straighten it out any further than that. It's just a crooked lump of meat. But uh, it, I, I cut that thing two years ago, went through the whole surgery, the recovery process, and a lot of people ask me, how did that part go? So let's just run through this real quick. The recovery process was brutal. I couldn't use my right hand, I'm right-handed. I had to learn how to use my left hand for so many things and rely on family. But in the process, I learned to slow down, slow my mind down. It gave me a chance to just really look at my life and decide where I wanted to go moving forward. It just, it gave me time off work and I did a lot of thinking during that period. So moving on from that 12, and I've talked about all this in a lot of these other videos, but moving on from that, people are asking me after 12 weeks, could you get back into weightlifting again? Could you get back into working with your hand again? Did your hand work? Well, after 12 weeks, my doctor released me to use the hand and lift weights. I started lifting weights at that point again. And within, I was surprised, within a month to six weeks, I got my weightlifting weights right back up to where they had previous, previously been, almost, not completely, but I was pretty much there. The finger was really sore when I would use my hand for that first entire winter. That 12 weeks ended for me in October, I think. And I went through an entire winter and that finger was difficult to deal with. It was very sore, it hurt. I continued massaging it and working it and all that through the winter. But there was so much scar tissue. Every time I would go outside when the weather was frozen, that finger would freeze up and I would have to go inside every half hour or so and run my hand under warm water just to warm it up again, then go back outside. So you have to deal with that. You're gonna have scar tissue, there's no way around it. Once that first winter went away, the summer came, it was a relief. However, the finger I showed you in that one year update, it still doesn't work. The end of it doesn't, doesn't work. It's just basically a nub there, but it helps me hold cans and things like that. Over time, now we're at two years, over time it has gotten easier and easier to deal with. I don't even think about it anymore. I get a little bit self-conscious sometimes when somebody points it out to me. You know, I'll be talking with my hands like I always do and someone will say, what happened to your finger? And so, you know, it's you know, a little self-conscious, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. A lot of times I try to talk with my hands like this now so you can't notice, but I'm not very good at it, so I just do that. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. None of us are gonna take any of this with us when we die. It's gonna be worm food at some point. So, you know, what are you gonna do? So anyway, it's been two years. It's feeling better. It's not sore like it used to be anymore, although it is very gummed up. There's a lot of scar tissue in there still. I've done all the massaging. I've done all the exercising. This thing is what it is. It's never gonna correct from here. It's never gonna work properly, but uh, 
I, I hope to, I don't want to discourage any of you that are going through this now because I know it's a rough thing to go through if you're just starting this process, you just injured yourself, but even if your finger never works the same again, I'm telling you right now, there is peace. You will get used to it. Your mind will come to accept it and it won't be a big deal. And that's where I'm at now. Two years, it doesn't work fully, but I'm so used to it. It doesn't even bother me anymore. It's not a big deal. It's not something I even really think about. I do rub it and occasionally it kind of, you know, it, you know, I, I don't know, it's there. It irritates me a little bit occasionally, but 90, 7% of the time I don't even think about it. So that's that finger. The only thing I could say is if I could go back knowing that it was going to end up like this and that the tendon repair didn't work in the end, um, there, were, there are two different things that I would do differently if I could go back. One, I would highly consider not having the surgery. If it was for another finger or it affected the entire finger, that would be different. But on just cutting the tendon that attaches the end of the finger, that makes the end of the finger work, on the pinky finger, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? It, at the time, it was like, oh my gosh, I want my whole body whole again. And of course you would feel like that. I did, and it was a real struggle for me to not have it whole. But two years later, you're like, it's not the worst deal. So one thing... I would consider doing is just having the tip removed completely. It was already cut in half anyway, <laughs> but, and it would have saved, or, or just have the ER doc sew it up so it still looks like a pinky, sew the injury up, the cut, like they did in the ER, and then just not have the surgery, because it doesn't work anyway. And that way, it wouldn't have been crooked like this. This is all because of the surgery. It would have looked like a normal pinky with a little scar on it, and the end just wouldn't have worked. The surgery is what did all of this. The surgery is what made it look so deformed and screwed up and created all this scar tissue. So you got to consider that if you're thinking about having a surgery on your finger. These fingers are difficult for surgeons to work with. They're tiny spaces and I don't think that it's very often that they get them right. I wish I would have known that in the beginning. So that's one thing that you could consider. Just have the emergency room doc sew it up and go about your business. Save yourself $5,000 and three months off of work and get back to life. But it's something that you're going to have to come to terms with mentally. I think I would consider that knowing what I know now. The other thing that I would do differently if I did decide to do the surgery, which I did, is knowing that it wasn't going to work anyway in the long run, I would have started active range of motion immediately. The surgeon told me in the beginning, don't do any active range of motion for the first five days. It was in a cast. I couldn't move my hand. Then the occupational therapist, after five days, took it out of that cast and started passively bending it and moving it and doing all that. But I was still not allowed to actively make my muscles and tendons work. And what happened was, because of that, even though I was passively moving it, the tendon adhered to the scar tissue, and that's what happened. The tendon's intact, but it's, it's grown into the scar tissue, so it just doesn't work. So I would say, you know, even though the surgeon or whoever is telling you, don't actively move it or you're going to rip that repair apart, I don't know, man. It doesn't work anyway. I would highly consider, almost immediately, just very carefully actively bending it, not forcefully and not going past too much pain, but just really trying to keep that thing working right from the beginning. I would highly consider it. I don't know what else to say. I'm not your doctor. This is not medical advice. Seek out your own counsel. Um, total disclaimer, do not do what I'm saying here, but knowing what I know now with my own body and how this went and how it worked out, those are the two considerations. Either have the ER doc sew it up and go about your business and forget the whole thing, or actively move that thing from the very, very beginning to keep it working and keep that scar tissue from adhering to the tendon. Now, a lot of you have been following me for a while and saw that I injured my ring finger on this hand just this last spring. I was doing the most dangerous sport in the world, gardening. And I was reaching down, I made a video about it, I'll put that in the link 
grabbed down, grabbed the blackberry root out of the ground, and I ripped as hard as I could, and it didn't rip the blackberry root out. It ripped the A2 pulley in this finger. I'm going to take my ring off here and show it to you. So I never did an update on that, that video. I think I'm, I might have done an update a week later or something, but never on how it's gone since then, what I ended up doing about it. So I'll give you that update now. Anyway, just to show you, so there is, it is going to be hard to show you a healthy hand because none of my fingers are healthy, but there's my, <laughs> forget the pinky. Look at the, look at the, uh, see my ring finger, how when I, when I push that straight up in the air, this pops out here. That's just a normal finger. It does it on all, all your fingers. It's straight up and this kind of rounds out right here. See that? Now you can see the difference in this ring finger. It goes in. It doesn't round out like, uh, like that finger there. See that? I don't know if you can see that difference. So anyway, I ripped the pulley. So all kinds of scar tissue built up in here. It took about... For the, this is for those of you who've had pulley injuries. I thought my finger was done. I wasn't going to be able to grip again. In the end, I'll try to make this a long story short. I ended up going to a doctor. It was not helpful at all. Um, <laughs> I didn't go back. I then ended up taking matters into my own hands and calling a doctor to get an order for an ultrasound because I just needed to know in my own mind what I had done wrong with this finger. I did go and have an ultrasound done and sure enough it showed that I ripped through the A2 pulley right here and um, I did have um, tendon bowing. You, when, you, when you push on the finger there, the tendon bows out and I could feel it against the skin here. It was very unnerving at first, and it was painful, so I couldn't grip anything. It, I was off of gripping anything or doing anything with this hand. I mean, I could hold a can, but I couldn't squeeze for like six weeks. It was pretty tender. I didn't go to therapy. I didn't go back to the doctor. It was a, it was a bad experience I don't want to go into, but I, I learned everything I need to know. This is going to sound absolutely ridiculous considering you know our advanced society and all the medical you know, um, advancements we've made, but I learned more going to Google and, <laughs> and learning what I need to do from people on YouTube, how to treat this thing. Basically, I used that little tool I showed you in that last video in this series, and uh, that helped a lot in the beginning, but then it became a hindrance because the scar tissue wasn't able to build the way it needed to, and I wasn't strengthening the finger. It was just, it was, uh, it was becoming a crutch. So I eventually took it off, and I just started dealing with it just slowly but surely and now we are August 17th today this happened back in like March I think and I'm good now I'm back I'm I, for months now I've been lifting weights I've built back up to my strength level I can deadlift with hundreds of pounds and it doesn't it doesn't uh, affect anything I'm very careful now knowing what I know about grabbing things with the tips of my fingers with a lot of force because that's what caused the injury. The finger will never be the same. It doesn't have quite the strength that it used to, that like the other fingers do at the tip. Um, and that's just the nature of the mechanics of how I rip that E2 pulley. And it doesn't have the pulley to hold tight onto when I go to use that finger. So, but it does work and it works quite a bit and it works well as a whole with my hand. So it, it, it really is a lot less of an issue than this finger. It, the pulley will never heal. They don't typically do surgeries for these. And when they do, it's a nightmare. I've watched the surgeries online. I've read, you know, National Institute of Health reports on this situation. I've read about the outcomes of these surgeries. And if it's a really bad injury and you've ripped like two or three pulleys completely through, you may need a surgery so you can actually use the finger again. However, in my case, it was just one pulley out of five and you can learn to live with that again. It's not the end of the world. Thankfully, it happened on my ring finger. So my ring, now I can actually get my ring back on. It's still swollen, but uh, that's just the scar tissue. But uh, the ring actually supports it. So... There it is. That's my A2 pulley injury and how it's gone. It's been months now. It's healed up. Um, 
for rock climbers, I don't know, I'd still be, <laughs> I'd be nervous about using the tips of my fingers doing that again, but I know a lot of rock climbers get back into it again. I can make a full fist, but that finger doesn't completely fold down all the way in as tight as it used to. Who cares? You know, it's like, whatever. It does a lot better than this pinky finger does, but uh, it's not an issue anymore. And this one is not a struggle to deal with. It's just fine now. It's built up that other pulley. I could feel it when it was healing. The A1, I know I'm getting in depth here, but this is for the people who have had these injuries. You're probably going to be interested in this <laughs> more than the plant people. But the A1 pulley further down in the palm strengthened up a lot. I could feel it after the injury, like weeks after the injury. At first there wasn't a lot of pain, then the pain came weeks later. And I felt pain here where the A2 pulley is, and then I felt a lot of pain down in the A1 pulley area and up in the A3 pulley area. A lot of tenderness and a lot of pain. And what that was, was those pulleys strengthening and scarring up and really trying to build up a lot of tissue because they were trying to take the brunt of what that pulley was doing. Now that pain is gone. I have no pain there anymore, but those areas of my hand and that finger are swole, not swollen, but uh, they're fatter because of the scar tissue. And so that's how the finger works now. It's just using other pulleys to make that happen. But for those of you uh, mother-like types out there who are interested in how old Mikey's doing, because some of you keep asking from time to time, I'm doing just fine and uh, the hand's working again. It's no big deal. All right, so that's all I got for you guys today. I hope talking this through with you guys who have had these injuries, um, that this helps you, that these videos help you understand where the future is going to lie with you and maybe give you some ideas or suggestions on where to go with it. In the end, I still have two hands. Some people don't have any hands, right? So all I can do is thank God, you know, and just be, feel blessed that I've got two good hands that work. Anyway, if you guys like this one, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. It will help get these videos out to the people who need to see them. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.